when you understand that you want to learn something how how you go about it like uh, you said that you wanted to learn game theory how you go about it? like okay i will find the cleverest people in the world i will start searching on youtube i will just shut up and do meditation and think about game theory like what what is your process of learning well as as an academic i have access to all the published journals and so forth around the world and the and the books so I, i can quickly search to see what was out there and to my good fortune there was a professor i believe at harvard martin novak who had published a book called evolutionary dynamics where he basically laid out the mathematics of evolutionary game theory so cleanly so clearly that i could just read it and get it so he so thanks to martin nowak a wonderful book and my so i gave it to my grad students we we read it he was such a good expositor that that even though we were not in that field we could learn the tools and so grateful to him and then my graduate students uh, justin mark and brian marion started running these simulations and we got these wonderful simulations so then i realized okay there's a mathematical theorem here so i proposed a theorem to my my good friend chaitan prakash who he is a mathematician he's i'm not but he is and for for chaitan of course learning this evolutionary dynamics mathematics yeah, he's a mathematician piece of cake he he did a few days and he's on top of it for me it's a few months for him it's a few days <laughs> and so then then chaitan and i of course we collaborated talking back and forth but when it came to delivering the beef of a theorem that was chaitan And so Chaitan, we we had two or three different theorems, different t- uh, angles on it that we proved that so, that he proved. So you basically ve- you you cannot do everything yourself. You have to allocate. You have to find the right people to help you. And like That's right. uh, these people were critical to everything. With without them, I would have nothing. And there, no nobody can do anything himself. Learn to collaborate. You, you, I mean, there are a few geniuses like Einstein, but even Einstein had to go to a mathematician named Besso, I believe was a good friend of his. And so Einstein went hat in hand, and Besso helped him with learning what was the Riemannian geometry. He had learned Riemannian geometry or something like that to do his general yeah, theory of relativity. Yeah, he, but he found all these learnings from the other people. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, so, it, so no, but you cannot do stuff alone. Like, absolutely. Like we are do, we are, uh, we are humanity. We are super organized. We are working all together to stuff. That that that's that's really the case. If there hadn't been uh, a, a Riemann doing mathematics in the 1800s, there couldn't have been an Einstein theory of of general relativity. He couldn't have done it. He needed Riemann to give him the math. So, <laughs> so I heard a quote or something like this that was very beautiful. Uh, it said that I'm I'm not clever i'm just standing in the shoulders of giants yes that's newton <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, some I've, i've read that you know, people think that that's a really humble statement on the part of newton and it, it may have been i don't know but but i also heard someone say that that was really um a, a nasty remark that newton made um as a dig at a guy named robert hook that he didn't like and, and hook was a very short man So he he was said I if, if I've seen further I'm standing on the shoulder of giants and, and Hook was not a giant. Oh, so so, so it's so uh, maybe I, he said it with a bad intention. So so I, I I've heard I, I I'm not saying that that's the case but I I've, I've heard that you know there may be this other interpretation. I'm not sure if it's true. If you enjoyed this, click here to see the full podcast.